Hi guys, uh, this is the very amazing sounding Yamaha Taurus 1 keyboard. It has a fault where sometimes when you're playing it will crash or when you switch the keyboard on uh, the Yamaha logo comes on or it'll have a blank screen it will crash and it will go no further. In the beginning when I was having this problem I would knock on the keyboard, this area here or even at the back of the screen in this area here and uh, and that will let the keyboard come back on. I would play it for a while and then it will start crushing again. Over time, uh, this problem has become permanent. I've learned the Taurus One has a regulator board which sits just under the screen on the inside of the keyboard, which ends up having dry joints on the components. So we'll open this guy up, uh, have a look and maybe we can have a fix. I don't have a desk or a table to do this on. Uh, if you do, then that's good. I'm going to put the keyboard on the floor and uh, let's see how it goes. Board on the floor, as you can see, I've got this mat against my TV stand because I need to stand the keyboard to uh, disconnect some connections, uh, the power button and uh, also a couple of cable ribbon cables on the underside of the keyboard just sort of around there the keyboard is upside down because we have to uh, remove all the screws um, you've got a few on the edges some in this deeper section and don't forget these five screws you have to remove this panel because we need to unplug these two, you just uh, grab this guy, pull it up, that's one, and this ribbon cable. Be gentle, we don't want to damage this. Okay, once we've removed all the screws and the panel and disconnected the wires from the underside of the keyboard, this rear section of the keyboard, same on the other side up that much and then slide this panel forward you see this section has clear from the underside of the keys and then now what you want to do is lift just about that much go back and rest the panel with this section lying on top of the keys if you're worried about scratching your keys i suggest put some masking tape uh, and you should be fine now the next step is we will lift the whole keyboard up and the reason why we want to lift the keyboard up so i can lean the keyboard against this mat for me to uh, unplug and unscrew one of the connectors from the underside of this panel. So once you have the keyboard standing up, if you look in here, immediately you will see this guy here. Unplug this, and then also Do you see this connector here with these two screws? You undo these two screws. Once we've unscrewed this switch, on and off switch, from this panel here. I forgot to mention we need to disconnect these two wires as well on this board which was just above the on and off switch so these are quite easy you just pull this one and same with this one and your top panel
has completely separated from the lower part of the keyboard. Okay, so now here is a power regulator board. Um, I'm going to unscrew this guy, uh, unplug these two cables, and uh, let's have a look what's going on. I'll be right back. Okay, I have the regulator board out of the keyboard. And uh, let's examine the capacitors and other components if we can see any obvious damage or burns or any other defects. I don't see any on this side. Yeah, uh, like I mentioned, I read that these these boards they will have either a dry joint somewhere or one of the components is shot. So what I'm going to do right is I'll switch on the soldering iron and. go over these joints uh, freshen them up give them a new solder maybe that might fix a problem okay i've got the soldering iron on and uh, we will go over all these joints I'll do the rest of them and uh, come back to you guys, right? Okay, our regulator board is plugged back in. I've had a good look around. I don't see anything out of place or anything damaged. So uh, we can uh, put the top panel back on, basically the reverse procedure. And let's see if uh, we have a fix. Okay, while uh, putting everything back together and plugging all the wires on the left side, don't forget to run that ribbon cable and uh, the other set of cable through this panel here, you see the ribbon cable and the secondary plug make sure you feed that through the cap and make sure it doesn't get uh, it doesn't get uh, caught uh, in between the two panels let me just show you from the top just there okay once we have uh, run the ribbon cable and the secondary cable through the gap to the underside we will end up in this same position as we disassembled the keyboard in the first place so you will slide this just a touch forward this panel goes under the keys slide back And it's in. Okay, once uh, the top panel is uh, in with the lower part of the, the keyboard, don't forget to plug these back in. Be very gentle with this. We don't want to damage this ribbon cable. Okay, that's in and this plug
Okay, and uh, put all the screws back in. Um, if you want to test or do further tests, then you don't have to put the screws back in. But for now, I will uh, plug this in and see if the keyboard is working. Fingers crossed. Okay, keyboard is uh, all plugged in. And uh, moment of truth. Let's see if this guy comes on. Logo. There you go. Let me do that a couple of more times, see. If the fix is permanent. That's twice. Let's do it once more. I would like to say that's a success. Hopefully this video will help you uh, do the same. If you can save your beautiful sounding keyboard. As usual, thanks for watching and switch you guys soon.